Hello, my name is David Zaritsky for James Bond Lifestyle Video Podcast. Welcome back. So now we've really gotten to know Ed Maggiani. We've seen the props, we've seen the impressive collection and the research. But now we're going to see some behind the scenes and really get some important information about the world that he's helped to create. Incidental. So as any good collector knows, it's not just the key James Bond pieces, but the incidental pieces that really fill up the gaps in the collection. Maybe you can kind of point out and highlight some of these that we sure. have here. Yeah. Well, uh, if we start in the corner, we have, for example, this would be Zhao's uh, camera phone with his earpiece. Uh, we have also Zhao's necklace, which contains diamonds inside, really has diamonds. Uh, Bond used one of these magnifier loops also in... Uh, Die another day. Mm -hmm, yeah. <laughs> uh, we have the glasses here from Tomorrow Never Dies, the uh, key, which doesn't light up, but it will one day. Uh, we also have, then again, some shurikens used by uh, Wei Lin in uh, Tomorrow Never Dies, several of the phones, Quantum Masalas and uh, Casino Royale. We also have here uh, the inhaler. And oh, yeah, Le Chief's inhaler. Le Chief's inhaler, right? This is an interesting piece. You only see this for a second or two. It's uh, really unique. Don't know what it's called, <laughs> but you see it for a couple of seconds and uh, die another day. My gosh. Uh, when Bond's actually being held prisoner. All right. Um, this is from a Roger Moore film, For Your Eyes Only. We have some casino chips here from uh, License to Kill. Bond's knife here again from License to Kill. Uh, this would be Bond's knife from Tomorrow Never Dies. Uh, several of the throwing knives used by Jinx. Hey Ed, let me ask you a question, because I see the knives and stuff, and mm -hmm. a layman might say, okay, so those are throwing knives, I see them all the right. time at gun shows. How do you find the right one? Uh, well, you have to do a lot of research. Uh, I would think probably your best bet, first of all, anytime you're buying anything, is to do the research and really know what you're buying. Because I've seen too many people that buy things which somebody says is from a Bond right. film, and it really isn't. You know, and I'm going to do a little plug for you, but only because I've known you for, you know, God knows how many years. Um, when in doubt, I actually call email me. Ed or call <laughs> Ed, you know, Absolutely. the FUDs at AOL.com, and um, we'll, we'll actually list the, um, the connection and, and the contacts at the end of the, uh, the video, but when in doubt. Absolutely. I'll be more than happy to help anyone. Uh, it just, it does, you don't have to buy it from me for me to be able to tell you what it is or help you to get whatever it is you're getting. But uh, again, I've seen too many people spend a lot of money and only to find out after the later that they've already bought it and then they get in touch with me that I tell them it's not the right one. Yep. So you don't want to spend a lot of money on something that's not right. And here we have something interesting. This is a uh, evolution of the various rebreathers from the movie Thunderball. This is a, uh, an original Romeo and Julieta 2. And uh, this first one here is actually made from using sparklets. Sparklets were used by Burt Luxford to make the original piece. He turned these down to fit into this custom made piece. Now Steve uh, from SD Studios made and produced these as licensed products. This first one here, uh, if you notice, is a little different from these other two that are next to it. That's because this is the one that was used um, in the scene <clears throat> when Bond first receives it and that was filmed in Pinewood. Later on when they actually filmed in Miami, Nassau, they used this version which as you can see it looks more like the Burt Luxford version. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more turned down, it's not as short and it, uh, the tubes are turned in the front. Alright, All right, so then we have here, uh, this is the uh, case that was used in The Spy Who Loved Me. Then you'll see uh, from View to a Kill, the heart locket. Also from uh, View to a Kill is the Zorin Injector, uh, the medal presented by um, the Russian consulate to Bond. Uh, this is a prototype of what will be eventually ah. Teehee's cutting fingers I hand thing. I love that. Uh, again, this is one of the items that was seen in License to Kill when the Q brings a lot of gadgets sure. to get to Bond. Uh, several nods here from Thunderball, and this one is from uh, Live and Let Die. This is the one that was used by Kananga to cut Bond's wrists. Well, sort of. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's yeah. forearm, forearms, anyway. Uh, here we have the throwing knife from Honor Majesty's Secret Service. Uh, if you look really close here, you can see that this is a little wolf whistle device. Oh, yeah. And uh, next to that are a couple of matchbooks from various things. Never Say Never Again, Man with the Golden Gun. 
we have this badge which we had custom made. Uh, this is the actual badge that would be used by uh, Sheriff Pepper and uh, that was from of course Live and Die. We have other items here which again are patches. You'll see something here which is the uh, armored Oh, here. Yeah, the armor's cool here. This would have been worn by the soldiers in Fort Knox. Okay. These are the, uh, this is one of the patches that would have been worn by one of the troops guarding Fort Knox. These are the patches that would have been worn also by the infiltrators when they went to Fort Knox. Here we have the uh, actual unit that was used in Diamonds Are Forever. It's uh, actually a cork opening device. You can see here it has a mm -hmm. very deadly, lethal looking thing, but in reality it just uh, is a cork remover. <laughs> <laughs> this is a knife that's not really from the Bond film, but it's very similar to what would have been used by Bond in Thunderball. In the one scene when he's under the water in the pool, you'll see that he reaches underneath his, uh, his pants and he's got a sheath with a knife in it, which he stabs the assailant with, and it's this knife, but with a different handle. Hmm. All right, then we have here the Honey Rider knife, uh, knife and belt, the Nikonis camera, which is a radioactive uh, detector. Um, let's see, we have here the finger device, Love that which piece. is used in uh, Diamonds Are Forever. These are Rosa Klebs knuckles, <laughs> and uh, this is the uh, very unique, it, this is a uh, light bulb. But, yep. uh, the uniqueness of it is that it was used uh, by the photography girl to uh, scratch Carl's face. Remember oh, that sure. Doctor now. These are the same type of handcuffs that were used to uh, bind Bond uh, by the Dragon Crew when they caught him on the swamps. Then we have some uh, pyrite, which is uh, kind of what they would have taken to Professor Dent to get analyzed, mm -hmm. which they later found to be radioactive. We have a uh, switchblade similar to the one Quarrel would have used. I love that he, knife. Uh, when he first actually That's meets great. Bond and uh, kind of pulls it on him. The calling device, which... Uh, now you used. made that, didn't you? Yeah, I made that. And uh, that was, was probably the, one of the first things that I made when I first started making Bond Perhaps As simple as it is, I've actually gotten a lot of requests for it. Oh, and, yes. Uh, it, this is what uh, was used by number one to basically call in... Uh, <clears throat> so, mo, mo, I, I think every executive in the world would like one of those. Yeah, on that desk. Be, if I Absolutely. could make one to work, it'd be cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, other things are this is something that was offered a very limited run mm -hmm. by one of the members of the replica prop form, and that of course would be number one's Spectre ring. These are the Craven A cigarettes, which would have been used by. Uh, the chauffeur in Dr. No, he uh, actually had them so that they had cyanide inside and he was mm. able to uh, kill himself before Bond got any information out of him. I see a condiment in the back in a tin cup. What's the condiment from? Is that Dr. Oh, no this, as well? Uh, yeah, this is, if you look really close in Dr. No, you'll see it's on the table when they're in Pussfellows Club. Oh my gosh. And, and is that something that's still available? At? Actually, you can buy this today and it actually tastes very good. I use it all the time. You see that? So, so I mean, it's a Bond prop and it's a condiment. So, so grocery stores have Bond props right <laughs> yes, now, folks. Go out today. Absolutely.